time for a rant, sort of. Um, I get really irritated when I hear people say, America is the greatest country in the world, or America is a Christian nation. And here's why. This happened today, and it bothers me. So, my roommate had walked over here, and he told me about a lady that was walking. Uh, a good, like where she was at, she probably had a good mile or more to walk. And there's no shade that whole way. She was a bigger lady, an older lady, and she had a cane. I know tons of people had to have passed her and not offered her a ride to wherever she was going. And if you're from the South, you know it's nasty out there, especially when the sun's out. So I left my bed to hop in the car and give this lady a ride to where she was going which I actually had business there. So I was like, well, hey, you know, I'll wait with you. And she was just wanting to see where she was at on the housing authority list because she was told by the person she lives with, you gotta be out in August. She has no car. She broke her phone. Um, I don't know her life story. I don't know what what good or bad she's done in her life. Um, but I do know that being told it's going to be at least four months. And, you know, she's been on the waiting list for a while because where I'm at, if you want to get housed in this county, it's a three-year waiting length, if you're lucky. So when I hear somebody say, we're a Christian nation, and I think of all of the churches that exist here in the Bible Belt especially, and all of them, dang near all of them being Christian churches, uh, there's not a lot of, in, in my area, in Arkansas, there isn't a Jewish temple um, there are two mosques in Little Rock. Um, there's, there probably is a Jewish temple in Little Rock. There is a Buddhist temple near me. Um, so you can hardly go a block without hitting a Christian church. And my idea of a good Christian is somebody who it hurts their heart to see a person living on the streets. It hurts their heart to know that people are starving. And it hurts my heart that I know there are good Christians in every single one of these churches and they are not pushing, hey, Let's serve meals to the poor. Let's get with city council and see if we can't buy a building to have a shelter. Um, let's see if we can't partner up with Habitat for Humanity and the housing authority in the area we're in and see about building more housing so people who want to be housed can be housed. Let's see about um, helping out drug addicts who don't want to be drug addicts. But they ain't doing that. And when I walk into, uh, there's this one big church in a county over. And, and it's, it's massive. Absolutely massive. Marble floors, state-of-the-art sound system. Um... You know, just like, this thing is gorgeous. 
and and when you see the cars parked there, there's a church right down the road from me. When you see the cars parked there and you think about people giving 10% of their income and you realize that they don't have a clothing closet, they don't feed the homeless, they don't donate to, there's an organization in my town that helps feed the poor and has a clothing closet to help people. This, this church is not a part of that. They don't do any kind of community outreach. And you can't tell me that there aren't people in that church who are hurt seeing people out there in the heat or the cold and saying, how do we fix this? You can't tell me that the U.S. government doesn't know it's a problem as well. They know. They know drugs are a problem. They know homelessness is a problem. They know it. They don't want to do anything about it. They would rather spend money on ways to unalive people than to help people live their best life, or at least a semblance of it. When I went to New Orleans, the one time I went to New Orleans, it was a particularly cold day. Um, it was under 20 degrees. And the bars had closed. And I saw people sleeping on the sidewalk without even a cover. Like there's nobody even passing out covers to these people. I don't know their story. Maybe they want to be out there. I can't imagine why you would want to be out there when it's under 20 degrees, but oh well. It was so cold that my tears were freezing on my face as they fell. It broke my heart. And when I think about this woman having to walk and nobody's stopping to give her a ride, I mean, she's obviously not a threat. She's huffing and puffing and has a cane, you know. It doesn't matter what her deal is. She's not a threat. You can't tell me that somebody didn't pass her by, you know. And the person who told me that she was out there was an atheist. That's who's more likely to help people. And you want to say this is a Christian nation. If all the churches got together to tackle it in every place, and I also think that transportation options, you know, um, where I'm at, there aren't really any. If you're poor, you're screwed. And there's a lot of homeless that if they could just get to another town, like they might have to cross state lines, they might have to go all the way across the country, maybe they should get some kind of voucher that lets them do that if they know that they've got a place somewhere else because this lady I picked up, she said, if I had a vehicle, I'd go to Oregon. And I asked her what was there and she said family that would help. She should be able to do that. Or she should be able to get into a place here, even if it's a shelter. And there are options in Little Rock, but a lot of a lot of people in my county are scared of Little Rock. You know, it's a big city. There's crime. You know, there's there's stuff that happens there. Um, and as an older person, I could see being extra scared. You know, an older person who walks with a cane and she was having like some kind of breathing problem too. You know, but you know. When you see these things, how can you feel good about yourself if you have the means to help or you have the connections to help and you keep doing nothing? You think God's happy with you? Do you are you really that good of a Christian? Hmm? I don't think so.